Yes, okay, starting now. Um, so my name is Emily Slocum, and I work at Acquia, um, and uh, talk is leveling up in DevOps. And if, I don't know, I noticed when people were looking at the actual schedule, it doesn't say this is a culture talk. So this isn't going to be a very technical talk. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of you know, took it down a little bit, and um, as much as I was really hoping to put my coworkers really crummy shell scripts in here, I did not do that. Um, <laughs> and as a result, yeah, you'll see. Anyway, so um, I am technically, I guess, my, my actual job title is Senior Cloud Systems Engineer. Um, yeah. Uh, See, we buzz for that. Um, let's see, this thing isn't going down. There we go. All right, so um, re buzzword that. Yeah, I, I accelerate the web and stuff. Um, <laughs> it's all actually, I do, I, I am the Mongo person at my place, so that web scale thing gets tossed at me a lot. Um, Anyway, yeah, so me, I have been a sysadmin for a long time, and I'm typically the database person, um, just because I, I don't know, enjoy it. Um, I've been doing databases since 1999, sysadmin since 98, and bad Perl firmly since 98. Um, actually, yeah, the really worst Perl started in 99. Um, my coworkers, I'm gonna, so that's me. My coworkers, um, this is kind of the path of this talk will take, will kind of cover this intern that I worked with last year. Um, I didn't have a lot of faith in him in the beginning, and he totally turned that around, and it was um, based on his bad shell scripts. Um, and I'm also gonna talk a little bit about how our team has gotten so much better in the past year. We are a whole bunch of like little cowboy sysadmins with a whole bunch of shell scripts, and we don't talk to each other, and we kind of have like rivalry with our shell scripts. Um, but we've we've kind of come together in a decent way. Um, so it's it's a touchy feely talk. Um, <laughs> yeah, sysadmin with a fancy title. Um, I spend a lot of my day fixing problems, um, and since I'm senior, senior involves possibly a percentage of thinking. Um, so I try to do that. It's a nice day if I get to think and discuss and coordinate. Um, you know, when there's a fire, you don't get to do those things. And I do interviewing. I um, had yesterday's conference and didn't get to come here because I was interviewing. Um, as a person with some significant lifelong phone phobia, a Skype interview with a stranger is not my idea of a good time. Um, so yeah, I, I try to frame it as, um, I put a positive spin on it, like, these are my future coworkers. I get to guide the team um, and, you know, influence people. So, you know, I try. Um, okay, so what I'm looking for in my peers is that they like Linux. And I don't mean just, you know, they might have a VM somewhere and, hey, it's kind of cool. I mean, like, they run it as their primary operating system and they think it's awesome and, you know, they, they start doing crazy things with it. They try all the distributions. They do that sort of thing, and likes internet. I don't mean like they enjoy surfing the internet or looking at pictures on Google images of cute cats. Um, I mean they have to really enjoy the concept of like flinging packets across the internet in faster and better ways. Um, it's, it's a special kind of person, and the most important quality I think in my job that I'm looking for in, is that they enjoy fires. Um, my concept of sysadmin or DevOps or whatever you want to call it these days um, is that we're basically lazy adrenaline junkies. Um, <laughs> it's true. Um, it's like we're not the type of person to fling ourselves out of airplanes. We just wait for like Amazon to eat up an entire availability zone and have your cluster fencing tool fail. Um, that's the kind of fire we're looking for. And uh, preferring scripting to doing things manually, um, that is kind of important. I, I find that you know at three in the morning, if something's gone terribly wrong, if you're scripting it, you're going to do it better. Um, you know, there's less room for typos. Um, you can at least have consistent results 
and then you can improve upon those tools later. Um, so my kind of person has all of these core qualities, and that's what I'm looking for. And that intern I told you about a little earlier, he said this the other day, like two days ago in chat, and I just thought it was so great, like you are so awesome, John. That's going in my talk. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I have the 4U set up with 12 LXC containers and proper VLAN set up, but need to get the network hardware in use. That pick doesn't show the Cisco Wi-Fi AP either. I think I can run up to 12 SSIDs LOL. Like, that is a very special person that's doing this in their free time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is in his apartment, and he just moved to Somerville in, in Massachusetts, and yeah, he's fresh out of college, and this is his idea of a Friday night. So, I do adore him, um, and here he is. He, he, <laughs> he just started as a proper tier two. He, he skipped tier one, went straight to tier two from intern, um, drinking really bad coffee from our Keurig machine in the Boston office, which is swill, I will not drink it. Mm -hmm. um, and he's drinking it out of a paper cup because, I mean, I won't even drink out of a paper cup because it doesn't taste as good. Um, he, so, yeah, there he is. Happy first week. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, there are some de decent coffee shops. If you're ever there, I can point you to some. They're decent, yes. <laughs> Not fabulous. All right, so these are the kind of questions that he asked me in the very beginning. And, um, <laughs> um, these, I mean, these all kind of told me, hey, it's okay that I'm giving root to this kid on like over 5,000 Amazon instances because he's on the right path. Um, so that's another thing. Our sysadmins are in charge of well over 5,000 instances um, at root level. You can take down everything. Um, so it's a lot of, it's a big web of trust. Um, so this is the one that they love to ask me, um, and I, we work in Drupal, if you don't know what Acquia does, we support and host and do whatever with Drupal. Um, what's that? The MySQL check? Yeah, that's what I, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, I get this question, why is my Sam so bad? If you've ever run a, a very high production, super fast, important website and had some MySAM tables behind it for Drupal, sometimes things go a little bit bad. Um, so they really, like once, you know, they, they've come fresh out of college and they don't know the nuances of all the table engines and what can happen. So, I mean, they like this question because I can talk for it for about like a good two hours just on MySAM, but I do, say when it's a, a good use case as well. Um, they also like this one, and in the support the support people in my current office are really enjoying this one with me lately. Why do you hate my top? Um, I can tell you why I hate my top. I hate my top because usually the server is already falling over, and then you have seven people log into the server that might only have 30, thing, you know, 30 threads available and you know they all start a screen session, forget about it, running my top. Um, that's why I hate my top. I, I mean, it's useful, but yeah, um, it's their first thing when something's going wrong is they run my, my top. So that's another good question. Um, really good question that you know this intern is going to do well is you know how do you how did you find that bottleneck? Each website installation that we have is very different profile. Um, different traffic, different modules, different sizing, um, different tunings. So, you know, if they're asking me questions about how I came to discover that, hey, you know, that URL is not being cached and that's causing everything to blow up. Or, um, you know, there's some sort of comment spam going on and that's killing this because, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's, you know, that always makes me happy and um, applies lessons globally until a new lesson. That is um, basically, you know, they'll, they'll get on a new kick. Like some week it's like everything's an APC issue. You know, they just need to add more memory to APC and that is the solution to everything. Um, 
That's great. So suddenly, like, you know, there's 5,000 tickets in the queue for APC. Whatever. Um, that did recently happen, too. So this is, like, straight off of off the street. Um, and then once they get a new lesson, you'll see that phase out, and the new thing becomes, you know, not enough memcasty or whatever. Um, so that's, that's basically the trajectory I see with people learning. Um, and with this one particular intern, um, he used to enjoy impressing me with his one-liners. So in one-liners, I mean like this bash command with 5,000 iterations of set and awk and a bazillion curly braces and some cut and some xargs and some printf. And he would just, he kind of thought it was really cool to disgust me. <laughs> so um, I, I don't know if he realized, I, I couldn't even understand these. Like, I didn't try to understand what he was doing. They were that hard to read. Um, I just knew that he was having a good time and he was learning. So let's keep that going. You know, show me your next horrible one. Um, <laughs> And then eventually, he, you know, a lot of our platform is done in Ruby, um, with, with all the, the Puppet and stuff. Um, so he decided to learn pup, uh, Ruby. And what he ended up with was 2,000 lines of something that even he can't bear to look at anymore. Um, so that's, I, I mean, I like that kind of progress. Um, and another thing that we do that's pretty special is Every single day we have Kanban and we have an agenda that's in a Google Doc. Um, and I, I try to make sure that people actually show off their latest functions, tools, whatever, scripts, and how they might be of use. Um, so that's kind of how things go with him. And that's why he was so special. Um, so this is something I pulled out of his bash history recently. This is how I troll for material is in my coworker's bash history. Um, <laughs> So I had to hit you know, a couple of enters and some little bit of spacing to make it a little bit more readable, but this is just typical. And this is cleaner than his normal stuff. Um, a lot cleaner. I don't know what he was trying to do there. I did not bother to see if I could find if test.txt was there. Um, but this is what I was working with. Um, a lot of awesome. And so, yeah, I was really proud when he got hired as a tier two. Um, and to call him, you know, my peer, because he's now on the same level as me. Um, and then I found we were arguing about, well, we weren't arguing. We had um, a problem. The script was no longer working. And what this script did was it um, parallel SSH'd over a whole bunch of, you know, one tier of our architecture and would take access logs. And then those access logs get streamed to the bastion, and then we, we process those. So the thing that was going out and pulling all those logs was no longer hitting it because hosting engineering changed the path to this one particular log. Um, so somebody decided to, and we'll get to this later, put a wildcard in there um, for the, the path, which would have worked, but um, we were coming up with alternate better solutions. And in that code, I found he had done this. Um, so let's just, my heart was broken last week when I saw this. Um, <laughs> sorry. So what he did, I mean, if, if you're not fluent in the bashish and the commands on the Linux or whatever, typically hostname pulls out a fully qualified domain name. Um, so it's yada dot yada dot com dot biz or whatever. And so he piped that to cut, took, based on the delimiter of dot, took the first field. So as a Linux person, you know that this is probably a lot more efficient just to do hostname s. Um, and so that's how he took it really well. And I found out today that actually he blamed it on a different tier one. Like the other tier one had done this originally and he was just copying their work. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so things that we have done that brought us together as a whole bunch of crazy sysadmins that were doing their own thing and wasting a lot of their own time by reinventing the wheel. Um, we started out in our wiki with a shared bash RC. So basic functions that called the API in the middle of the whole of Acquia. Um, 
and with minor changes, we would, we would invariably, you'd start with this thing, you wouldn't like it, so you'd change your own bar, bash RC. Um, we changed that, and I'll get to that later, but it was one way, one place where we started to collaborate just a little bit and make our lives a little bit better was, hey, I've got this new, you know, I've got this new function, put it in your bash RC, enjoy. Um, and a safe place, uh, there's another talk that I would totally enjoy being at right now. It's at the same time, it was the, the not done IRC bot thing. Um, we have a chat bot, and I found that it's a really fabulous place for our new people to start contributing to the code base. Um, you know, we have it in GitHub. And it, it's a safe, non-production place to test and start learning to shell, even just start learning Ruby. Um, it's a great little place because, you know, it's always there. It's in your face. You want to fix it. So people just start contributing. Um, we have Our chat bot does a lot of things. Um, it pulls from the Amazon status page. It collects karma, of course. So, you know, there's the typical plus plus. I have a lot of karma. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, what else does it do? Yeah, it pulls from our Twitter, our never to be named Twitter feed that's special to us um, and other things. But let's see. Oh, God. Okay, so um, it also does this thing where it contacts our, it contacts our PBX and you can send it a Google um, TTS message to send to a phone, any phone. I could dial any of you right now. Um, but we sent one of our old coworkers a birthday message today. Um, so it just basically said, happy birthday, blah, 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 blah. And it was kind of insulting and interesting. But that's the things that our, our, our you know, baby project can do. Um, but yeah. Shell, yeah, shell scripts can do anything, even birthday wishes. Um, so, all right. <laughs> um, so this, I'm guilty of this. This was actually created for the person that sent the birth birthday message with the PBX earlier today. But um, it's just better if you're writing your SQL statements out of Bash because they're going to be repeatable. You can loop over them. Yay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we do that a lot. I call it bash QL. Um, that's the technical term. Um, so we pull that out a lot. I have a bookmark, so clearly it's, it's meant a lot to me. Um, so here's one way that I've trained people. <laughs> um, it drives home the message that when MySQL stop, starts writing temp tables to disk, performance is going to suffer. This is the eloquent way of saying that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's, um, it's a useful learning tool for me to explain that, you know, there are certain data types out there and certain queries and certain functions that are always going to write to disk. And, yeah. It's a bad thing. All right, so that's one thing. And then S trace. I never used S trace much before my current job. I'm not a programmer. Um, but when you're dealing with runaway PHP procs, S trace is like the best thing ever. Um, so, you know, it's, it's always one of the early lessons that we give to our DevOps people um, that, you know, hey, have you S traced that yet? And, you know, when they actually find, oh, it's hanging on a remote API call, wow, S trace is awesome. S trace is awesome. And, you know, people have taken upon themselves to S trace each other's S trace and stuff. <laughs> yeah, S trace inception. <laughs> um, yeah, this is what we do for fun. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Back to making everything better and us work better as a team because, you know, I've been a system in for a long time and we tend to be pretty cowboyish. Um, we started taking that bash RC, which was getting really crazy. So we would, what would happen is you'd be running these commands, um, simple as like basic, you know, flags that are set. You know, is this server in rotation and load balance or little things that would get output? 
But because we'd all modified it, suddenly they weren't in the same order. So we were in JIRA tickets posting things that were just a little bit different. It's a lot harder to audit things if everybody isn't doing the same thing. So we started a movement to make a unified Bash RC, and it's, it's much, much bigger. Much bigger. <laughs> so all you have to do now, in addition to whatever functions you wanted to put in your Bash RC, we source this thing that's under Git control. Um, and um, it's a pretty mature project, um, and it, ha it, it did a ton of work. I'll get to it. But this is what's in that um, end that's getting sourced. This is the meat of it, basically. There's a whole lot of other stuff that happens. But you know, we're defining a basic path with our bin or scripts. Um, and then these are kind of like the upper level of other things that are getting sourced. Um, and just ignore that back tick. I had to make it fit on the slide. Um, and yeah, I have another rule. I'll just mention that right now. I'm not allowed to complain about somebody else's scripting if I'm not willing to patch it. So <laughs> I'm not going to complain about anything that's here. Um, although just this gesture perhaps is. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's pretty awesome and it's robust. Um, how robust is it? Well, um, these are the contents and just some of these are kind of uh, relics of the old system. But we actually have libraries that we've done in Bash. Um, our basic scripts which do awesome things. Um, we have tab completion. We make sure that there's tab completion, which is super um, profile D and whatever. Mail filters, we want to make sure all the sysadmins are getting pinged on the same Nagios. So we just we use Google Mail. So you just import those in and make sure people are getting the exact same alerts <coughs> for different matches. Scripts and search, that is um, that's historical stuff. The stuff we couldn't fit into the current system is still sitting in there. Um, but yeah, all right, so it has made things so much better. There's even um, a giant Google Doc, of course, which um, has how to use it, how to name things, if you want to contribute to it, how do you start the process of contributing, um, and right down to like naming conventions. Like you are, you know, these are the basic, for all of this class of functions, start the name like this and then use this, and that ensures that you know everything gets in there smoothly, um, and also that it gets documented properly. Um, so, all right, so that's something that's really, really super, and I guess, you know, this is bad shell script, so I'll get to the things that annoy me now. Um, so having simplicity does not annoy me. I did not put a negative in that bullet point, but Things that are just way overly complicated, like if I ever saw one of young John Michael's um, one-liners end up in a shell script somewhere, I would be kind of sad. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like to keep things simple. If I can't read it um, and understand exactly what it's doing, something's probably gone awry. Um, another pet peeve I have with our shell scripts um, that you know they're getting revised are lots of echo statements. So. You know, early on, people just do echo, quote, quote, echo, quote, quote, over and over and over again. Like, and it just, it's ugly. It's not aesthetically pleasing. Um, wild globs of file system. That was a recent issue. Um, you know, some people haven't necessarily been, you know, around so long that they were working on their, you know, Pentium 1s with running, like, with a teeny bit of RAM and, you know, file system limitations and stuff like that. So when I see something you know, parallel SSHing all over, like, you know, upwards of, it, it, they could conceivably do it to 5,000 SAD servers um, with a wildcard just to, like, ingest tons and tons of data. It makes me sad that they're not restricting the available set just a little bit. Um, so I, I just, I tend to get really nervous when I see anybody wildcarding anything in a script. Um, lousy names. Um, there are some commands that we've done away with that were like task-kill versus get task versus set task. So like the logical thing is to have everything start with the word task and then the action after it. So um, we can be sticklers about naming. And that's 
these conventions are all written up in our documentation. Um, not using subroutines, well, whatever, everybody kind of knows that, but if you're cut and pasting the same thing over and over and over again, perhaps you might you know, save a couple lines. Um, and not sharing and discussing, that's probably my biggest pet peeve that I see um, that we're, we've been working to overcome. Um, just the very act of like, you know, you have this really awesome shell script that you've been working on yourself. And then, you know, your colleague over here is also working on a very similar shell script that they've been putting tons of effort into. And if only you guys just talked, one of you would have saved like a couple days of work. Um, it's as simple as that. And yeah, we, we've come a long way. Um, Daily Kanban with Agenda and this unified ops misc repo is um, saving. Okay, so um, I couldn't take, as I said, I couldn't take anything that's bugged me from my coworkers. So I present to you one of the nasties that I've done recently, like in the last two months. So while I've been doing this for a long time, I do enjoy writing really bad, dangerous, bash, pearl, whatever. Um, so I took my own stuff. Um, so I had a situation where we were trying to prove that suddenly the response time had changed, you know, according to a, a code release. And, you know, we have all these Nagios checks that, you know, just get, you know, the time to load the last tag on the page. Um, so it's timing the page, essentially. And, you know, Nagios writes to a log file. Um, so I needed some way to report on this. And being a MySQL nerd, I'm like, well, I'll just stick it in MySQL. And I can report on it any way I want to. Um, so I had all these log files. So it started out just grepping. So this is the, this is how bad things happen in my world. Um, so I started with one grep, didn't grep down enough, grepped again. I piped it to another grep, and then I piped it to another grep. Um, you know, it's how we roll. <laughs> and then I piped that because Sadanok wouldn't have been. Good in, like it would have been too hard for me to figure out in Sadanok. I decided to pipe it to a Perl script. Same thing, right? Um, mind you, this Perl script is written in ways that would make Perlistas like seriously cringe. And then I redirect that into SQL, which could have also just been redirected then to a MySQL database. Um, however, I was not loading it onto this machine. Otherwise, I would have. I had to like move it across the country to my own machine where I loaded it. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's the overview of what's going to happen in the next slide. Um, so this is, this is my version of really bad um, stuff. Um, so these, at least I put in the script exactly the lines I was trying to match against. That's really helpful going back. Um, and there, by the way, there's no use strict up here or anything like that, um, I can guarantee you that. Because that would just annoy me, like, I want variables. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I used a my. I was probably really proud of myself when I put the my in. I'm like, look it, it's local. So, um, yeah. Uh, so it started out with one bad regular expression. Um, it's not that complicated, but it got so bad that I it stopped working, like I couldn't reliably make it work, so I was just like, okay, see this dot star here? I'm like, I'll just take the rest of the stuff that I can't figure out because my little brain's not working that far, and I'll just capture it and deal with it later. So, um, so I, I do my initial assignments, and then, so I take my thing, and I, I'm a big fan of dollar debug, so a lot of my scripts will just have that in, so I can just toggle lots of verbosity, and often, I had to edit the swear words out of this before I pasted it. <laughs> um, darn, it became bleh. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, sometimes I'll do various levels of debug, um, but it's just like a debug equals one up here. Um, anyway, so then I finally deal with that last bit of numbers that I was unable to regular expression myself out of. And I'm like, I'll just take it and just leave the numbers and the dots and you know, forget the rest of the text. And that's how I solved this problem. And yeah, it's, it's just ugliness. And it's not going to make it into our, our mutual shared repository ever. Um, 
And yeah, so here's another one of my Debo guns. Ignore these funny little things. Um, LaTeX was giving me issue. Um, so yeah. And then here's my standard out, which then could have been easily piped into a database appropriately had I chosen to. Um, so yeah, that's just the ugly stuff I do. Um, I enjoy it. It makes me happy on the days that I get to do that. Um, we have a saying that any day you get to use set and awk, it's a good day. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, overall, I mean, I, I think that we've improved the state of our, our scripting quite a bit just with the ops misc repo. I'm going to try and pull over the page that has some of our documentation so you can kind of see how we do things. Um, let's see if this goes over. Hey, look. No? <laughs> Darn it. Oh. oh, it's over here. Okay, I gotta take this out of presentation mode over here. Escape, yeah. Right toe. Um. So, I mean, we actually have something that explains everything. And, um, yeah, not going to go too far into it where we start commenting on it, but there's you know clearly a sidebar here where we've commented heavily on each other's decisions. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's we even do tests. Um, so yeah, it, it, we just to have this here to set down junior people with and say, hey, you can contribute. You don't have to feel like you haven't been doing this for a gazillion years. Um, our infrastructure is super complicated. This at least simplifies it and says, hey, I have an entry point. Um, and in all of my time in ops, it's probably been the happiest little community of of people working together. And we work. I don't know. I, I have trouble understanding what exactly the definition of, of DevOps is. Um, it seems like some people just call sysadminery DevOps and then some developer. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, we do a fair amount of shell scripting and we hope to make things better. Um, so, let me see. Back to the slides. <laughs> well, therefore, we are DevOps. Um, okay. okay. So, yeah. Um, my boss had me put this in last minute. Um, <laughs> I managed to get through this with no logos or anything like that. Um, you can always find me on Freenode. Um, I have a VPS that's uh, attached, so I'm not necessarily there, and I might not see it for a couple of days, but the message will get to me probably more reliably than email. Um, that said, here is my email address. <laughs> um, I claim email bankruptcy, bankruptcy from time to time and just archive everything. And then I don't even really use Twitter, so whatever, but it's there. Um, and there's the handy link. Um, so does anybody have any questions? All right, so I think, first off, um, so I'm from Portland State University where we have like a, a training program. Mm -hmm. so Bot hacking is exactly true. Like everybody's in the IRC channel. One of the things that makes it so beneficial for new people to have fun with their own IRC bot or the community one is because the social aspect of being able to run those commands in the channel gives not just immediate feedback to the person who's running that script or whatever, like it's that everyone can see that they did it and everyone starts fighting with it, breaking it, making it work better. Yeah. It, for us at one point it was just one of our our people was like we have a, a YouTube links thing, so we we'll, we have different categories of music that we'll post these YouTube links to um, in the bot. And um, he was really upset that we didn't have a metal section, um, which was an executive decision by me and Phil. And <laughs> so, but he was able to contribute that in, and so he has his own section. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I mean, there's lots of the cool things that can be done. Like, how are you storing these bot? essentially databases like 
You know, are they going to di disk? Are you going to persist your karma when that bot gets relaunched? How does this work? Um, how do you purge things from it? Is it static? You know, is it just, you know, right in and that's it? Um, so, yeah, it, it gives people a lot of options and it's modular and it's Ruby. And um, I have a friend that actually wrote an entire IRC bot in Bash and it was a thing of beauty and horror. Um, <laughs> It, it did everything from like pretty boring stock quotes to you know it, it shouldn't have it could have been a problem but it also like would pull things from um, Urban Dictionary so if you poorly phrase something something really embarrassing could happen in your work chat do not advise <laughs> um, so yeah yep yeah but it's a beautiful nightmare right no? But my other question is, how do you manage uh, like merging into, you said, it's under, you said that the group shared doc files, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, the environment, um, it's under Git. Mm -hmm. So if I'm developing that, do I get closed locally and then push and someone merges? Or? We have it automatically syncing, living dangerously. Mm -hmm. um, so on our bastion, where all of this lives, um, it automatically will check out um, from Git. So like we'll it updates, it. yeah. Yeah. So then, okay. So literally, <laughs> I don't. Is there a code review around it, or just this looks good? Push. Yeah, there's code review. <laughs> <laughs> is it the yeah. Root environment is poison. Well. Yeah, I mean, I also have a lot of things that I just control R up to. There's there's such dangerous commands like relaunching servers, you know, AMI stuff, and um, I I will immediately unset that. I, I don't even want it in my own Bash RC. So I mean, I, I think we've been pretty safe in what's gone up there. The worst that can happen is API calls fail because whatever. So. I think the thing that blew my mind the first time was when I typed man and then open bracket. Like, <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, so um, that's, that's one place to start. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, the pro bash talk earlier this week was very good. Um, so yeah, I would say, you know, check out the advanced bash uh, scripting guide on the, the next documentation project pages for sure. Um, and it just, it starts all with one loop, that's all. And then, yeah. Yeah, we've had a lot of discussions about this actually, like, do we want to do all of our ops tools in Ruby? Um, and, you know, a couple of us, including me, are like, no, don't do that. Um, just because we've had enough bad experiences where, you know, the Ruby versions get messed up on a server or whatever. Um, it's, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for us just yet. Anything else?